Well, happy All Saints Day, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. Luke's. We are celebrating a lot of different things today. Uh, we are celebrating all of the saints, all of those folk who have died in Christ and are now raised to new life. But also we are celebrating the beginning of life as well, uh, as we're celebrating the baptism of Brooks this morning uh, and welcoming him into God's family. There are a lot of announcements today. They are all on this paper. Uh, so if you want to know what's going on in the church, read this. There is also uh, floating around at the at entrances are the poinsettia order forms. As, as much as we don't want to admit it, we're getting very close to Advent and Christmas. I know I don't want to admit it, uh, but so just keep those in mind. Those are floating around in a couple different places as well. Uh, because we have a lot of guests today, I just want to welcome you, but also just let you know, pretty much everything you need to know about the service is going to be in the bulletin. Uh, if it's not in the bulletin, it'll be in the dark red colored book. Uh, that is the hymnal that's got all the hymns that we're going to be singing in it. Uh, also, anyone is welcome to join us for Holy Communion. Uh, we do offer communion in two ways, both by intinction or by individual pre-prepared cups. Uh, and I will announce kind of more of how that will work as we get to that point in the worship service. Uh, but if you're missing a bulletin or you're missing one of the individual cups and that's how you'd like to receive communion, uh, those are also available at both entrances. Uh, and also, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, we are a Lutheran church, which means we do Lutheran calisthenics, you know, lots of stand up, sit down. If at any point you're just having trouble with that, that's okay. Uh, it's more about the attitude of our hearts than the attitude of our bodies and the things that we do with the standing up, the sitting down, and the kneeling, that is meant to reflect something that is going on in our hearts. So that's the important part. The things we do physically are just to help us do that. So if at any point in the service you have a hard time with any of those things, feel free to do what is comfortable for you. Uh, so with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Lord this morning with our prelude.
If you'll please stand as you are able. We're gathered to worship today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I invite you to kneel as you are able as we ask the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, to show us those sins we ought to confess and repent of. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me stand.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Pray together. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in God's promise through our baptism into Christ, we remember those who have died from this congregation and await the promised resurrection to eternal life. Clarence Wagner. James McLafferty. Nancy Dana Haas. James W. Barrow, John E. Nudie, Ruth M. Cipher, Robert King, Erica Schulke. We remember all who have died and will rise again through the power of Christ's death and resurrection. Charles Watson, Mary Lou McKay, David Red Hetrick, Bill Fluger, Rosemary Grossman, Tim Schaefer, Brian Ertle, George A. Raddick, Marcia Zima, Robert Balfour, Janice Benson, Laverne Bartley, Faith Everly Pickard, Cindy Colopilo, John Colopilo, Ed McGee, 
Lois E. Hay, Craig A. DeFinis, Debbie Green. We celebrate all who newly received their baptism and are joined with all the baptized into Christ's victory over sin and death. Danielle Muchow, Maria Cunningham, Brooks Gallagher. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is from Daniel, the seventh chapter. In the first year, King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive their kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Please let us read responsively Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To execute on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter. In Christ, we have also attained inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first set our hope on Christ, may live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. 
And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes away what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of our Lord. You You may be seated. Today, as we're celebrating All Saints Day, it's an interesting holy day in the church year because in many ways, it's quite like a funeral. Earlier in the service, we read the names of those who have died in Christ, some from our own congregation, some who are our friends and loved ones. And as we read their names, we remember their lives. We remember the life that they had with us on earth, but we also remember the life that they share in Christ Jesus, the promise of a resurrection to eternal life in a world that is uncorrupted and incorruptible. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Ephesus, wrote about this hope that we have in Christ. He wrote, In Christ you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. It's interesting here that Paul is tying together two events, the promise of life, but also the marking of the Holy Spirit. And that marking with the Holy Spirit happens, well, at the event that we're about to celebrate in baptism. It is rather fitting today that of all days we have a baptism because the person who is a saint is the person who is baptized. Baptism is that moment when God reaches into our lives and claims us as fellow heirs with Christ of all that God has. Through baptism we are set free from sin and death And we receive the Holy Spirit, which guides us in a new life of love and service. The Holy Spirit, whom we receive in our baptism, continually brings to us new life, growing us, teaching us, making us more Christ-like, making us all saints. In our Lutheran tradition, we believe that all those who follow Jesus are rightly called saints. And on days like today, we give thanks for the, to God for those saints whom we remember, but also for the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. And we see in the lives of the saints a strengthening of our own faith, seeing the work of God in their lives. And we seek to imitate their lives so that we can live according to God's call for us. 
For many of the folk who we would consider saints, we see in their lives a call to service of others. Now sometimes that is service on a worldwide scale. We can think of many folk who have given in ways that have affected so many people. But other times, that saint's effect might only be their own family. But these are people, whether through the whole world or just in one family, have fulfilled Jesus' call in the gospel today. To love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, to do to others as you would have them do to you. And yet, seemingly paradoxically, one of the most beautiful things about remembering the saints is that we remember that however much influence they had, however well they imaged God to us, they're humans alongside us. There's nothing inherently special about the people we remember as saints. They're people just like us. The same God who worked in and through them works in and through us to share God's love to an unloved and unloving world. And so we all join together in this call, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. We leave this place as saints of God, with Jesus' command to love those around us, to do good even when people hate us, to bless people when they curse us, to pray even for those who would harm us, to give generously, and to do to others as we would have others do for us. This call isn't easy. We need the strength of the Holy Spirit in our lives to do it. We need to remember that as we go out from this place, God is with us. And so we trust in the promises of baptism. As we celebrate Brooks' baptism soon, we also remember that God the Father has adopted us as God's children along with Jesus, his son. And we are heirs with Christ and we are also called saints. God has empowered us with the same Holy Spirit so that as we follow Jesus more closely each and every day, we are filled with the confidence that we too will join in the eternal celebration with all of God's saints. All the saints who have gone before us all the saints that are with us now, and all the saints who will come after us. And that we will all, together, live with God forever in a world that is perfect, in a world that we all look forward to as God's saints.
guys can gather on this side. People of God, you may be seated. Let, let us pray. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for life of the world. Who presents this person for baptism? And I just realized that I forgot to give the sponsors their cheat sheets. So I'll be right back. That'll help. Okay, let's try this again now that they know their lines. Who presents this person for baptism? And parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. To place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so answer, I do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture him in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so answer, I do. Now, people of God, do you promise to support Brooks Michael and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, respond, we do. We do. And if you would please stand as we profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you could kind of bring Brooks over here. Watch this uh, fishing line here. Just, yeah, just a little bit. 
That way we only make mostly a mess. All right. Brooks Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Brooks Michael with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right, we can kind of dry his head off here with either that cloth or that we've got there. And then Janine's going to anoint Brooks with some oil. And Brooks, may your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And we'll just give this to Dad because we shouldn't give babies fire. And we also do have a little gift for you. So there's a children's Bible in there and some other goodies. Uh, and then this is yours as well. And now, congregation, if you would please stand as we welcome Brooks. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. Please greet one another with a sign of the Christ into whom we are all baptized. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. <coughs> Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters. Quell raging fires and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Help us to elect trustworthy leaders. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you bless those who are hungry, poor, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. We, praise, we pray for those organizations and ministries who do your will, especially the Salvation Army, the Saxonburg Unit. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Abide with all going through transitions at work, school, or in their personal lives. Breathe healing to those who are sick, especially Dave, Al, and Josie. We pray for, Bru for Bruce, Barb, and Mary Jane. For Debbie, Pastor Storm, and Janie. For Melanie, Matt, Christine, and Maverick for Ellen, Joan, and Ada, for Matt, Chuck, and Mark, Glenna, Jessica, and Danielle. We pray for the Ron Novak family, for John, Bella, and Joe. 
We pray for Doris Jean, Dale, Janet, and Carol. Reassure us of your constancy in the midst of change. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now let us give thanks for what we have received from God and ask God's blessing on what we return. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we now prepare to receive this meal from our Lord's table, uh, as I mentioned before, we offer communion in two ways, uh, both through the prepared individual cups as well as by intinction. If you choose to receive by the individual cups, um, after the invitation to communion and before we sing the Lamb of God, I will announce the body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you, uh, at which point we'll consume the bread and the wine respectively. Uh, if you choose to re receive communion by intinction, our habit is to kind of start at the first pew to my left and then go towards the back and then come up from the back towards the first pew on my right and kind of making a horseshoe pattern. Um, because we are doing intinction, you will receive a wafer from me and then uh, the cup of wine will be with the assisting minister. Uh, as you receive the wine, you'll dip that or receive the wafer, dip that into the wine. If you should happen to forget and consume the wafer, it happens, it's okay, just please ask for another one. Uh, we are all one body of Christ, but we don't necessarily want to share that much. Uh, all are welcome to come to our Lord's table today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending of our Lord Jesus' betrayal, he took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. When supper was ended, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant established in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. You may be seated.
If you'll please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. And let us pray together. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we dismiss, I do want to warn you, on your way out the doors, you might be accosted by some potato-related things. Just, so just be aware that there are potatoes about. <laughs> just, yeah. So, knowing that there are potatoes about, go in peace to love and serve our Lord. <laughs>